everybody. This is Kickstart Mission Discovery's daily devotion. Every day we come here on Facebook Live, even YouTube Live now, uh, to give you a devotional for the day. This, this happens every mission trip. On every mission trip, we get together early in the morning, get around God's Word, then go out and serve. So we thought we need to go ahead and keep doing that even though we're not serving in different locations right now. So we want to serve you from home. And uh, today is a very special episode, Flashback Friday. Uh, so today we're going to flash back to one month ago, exactly one month ago, when Maury Buchanan came and talked about uh, being thrown away and what that feels like. So without further ado, happy Flashback Friday. Let's kick it over to Maury Buchanan. Hi, everybody. Maury Buchanan. I am the founder of Mission Discovery, so that's my connection to Mission Discovery. I am retired now. Jimmy Rivera is the president of Mission Discovery. My friend of over 27 years is at the helm of this great organization. Thanks for tuning in today. I am in my attic. This is the place where the stuff uh, lives that uh, we use seasonally over there. It's like Christmas, some Christmas decorations. But we, it's kind of cluttered. That's my, uh, my Christmas tree right there. Um, I, I'm so sad that um, Mission Discovery staff is seeing an igloo cooler. I need to get that back to you. Over there is all my, that's where I keep my luggage um, for Mission Discovery trip. That gray trips, that gray one over there is one I don't really mind if the um, customs ding it and dent it. It's just all banged up and it looks, looks rough. Nobody would ever want to steal it. it. This is the place where stuff lands that's, that's loved seasonally or it was that stuff that you know, we were going to throw away like, I don't know what, this is like a, a wheel. I just don't know. I just, I know I can use this wheel someday, but you know, it's just, we don't want to, we don't want to throw the wheel away. We just want to put it in the attic, you know, but because we could use it someday. I, I don't know if you've ever felt that way, thrown away. There was a lady in the scripture, she's mentioned in Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 21. Jesus is traveling with a man whose daughter is dying. Dying. His name is J. Iris. He's a religious leader. He's risked his reputation to call on Jesus to heal his daughter. And this, this great crowd is following Jesus. And a woman in this crowd approaches Jesus. She's been bleeding for 12 years. Scripture calls it an issue of blood. She spent all of her money, all of it, on doctors, and she's not gotten better. The scripture says she's only gotten worse. She's untouchable. The culture says uh, we're not supposed to touch you because you are what they call unclean. So I don't know where she lives. Maybe she lives out of town with people who, who live in a similar condition as she does, but she's called unclean. She doesn't even have a name in this scripture. She's only known by her illness. Have you ever felt like that, that you're only known by your mistake or what people call you? No one knows your name. You're thrown away. You're, you're in the attic. You're, you're, you, maybe someone could find value in you someday, but maybe not. So this lady approaches Jesus. She must know the scripture because she knows that he could heal her. And during those times, rabbis, uh, religious leaders, wore these cloaks. And uh, on the very bottom of these, uh, these cloaks, these garments, were these tassels. And you can re read about them. I think they're pronounced zitzits. And they're these little, small tassels. And I wonder if she was just heading for one of the threads of those tassels. She believed if she could just touch a little bit of his garment that she would be healed. So she did it. She pressed through the crowd. People probably noticed her and were, were given her space because they didn't want to touch her because they didn't want to be unclean. She was unclean. And so she got to Jesus' garment and she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately she was healed. Immediately she was healed. Jesus felt power go out of him. And he said to his disciples, who touched me? And they said, what do you mean who touched you? Look at, look at this crowd. I mean, everybody's pushing in on you. And he says, no, no, I felt power go out of me. 
The lady was so afraid. She came on her knees, trembling, and she said what she had done. She told the truth. I love those words. She told the truth. Jesus looked at her and, and he said, ma'am, your faith has made you whole. We live in a very, very difficult time right now. Um, some of you have lost your jobs and you could call yourself, I'm not my name, I'm just unemployed or I'm very sick. Some of you know friends who have COVID-19 and, and we've begun to identify them as our friend who has the virus. Remember that Jesus throughout scripture would see someone who would call themselves one name and he changed their name. Don't forget that God has a name for you. What is that name that God calls you today? That is not your illness, it's not your shortcoming, and it's not your sin, it's not the virus, it's not your unemployment. What does he call you? I want you to call yourself that name today in Jesus' name. I want to conclude today with a scripture verse from Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. Locusts chew everything off of trees, and God says he will restore what the locusts have eaten. So my prayer for you today is that God would restore what the locusts have eaten in Jesus' name. All right. Thank you, Maury. So if you go over to Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, all the things, you will find a an image for your small group. Today's image looks like this. Psych, it looks like this. We're a little backwards here. So uh, take this to your kitchen table. Take it to your small groups via Zoom. Uh, this has the wrong date on it because it's from a month ago. So this is Flashback Friday. Um, but go ahead and take this to your small groups and, and talk over. Our hope is that you would uh, start a conversation around these devotionals that we do every morning. So today is very special. Thank you, Maury, for being here. Michael, I miss you today, uh, but I'll see you on Monday. Remember, next week is the big payback, and here's just a little bit more about that. Well, hello everyone. I've got some exciting news for you. This year, Mission Discovery is going to be doing the big payback. And I know you might be wondering, what in the world is the big payback? Well, it's a big giving event right here in Middle Tennessee. Tons of nonprofits are a part of it. Uh, as, as donors give, they get uh, incremental gifts. So there's like fun matching and, and different things like that. There are incentives. So mark your calendars from May 6th. Be paying attention to our social media accounts for how you can be involved in the big payback. Uh, basically, it's a really easy way for you to help the goal and the mission of Mission Discovery. Here's a quick video just to show you a little bit about what the big payback is doing this year. Recent disasters in Middle Tennessee have forced many nonprofits, schools, and religious institutions to slow down or put their work on hold at a time when we need them the most. The Big Payback is a 24-hour online giving event to support hundreds of local organizations. Let's come together online at 6 p.m. on May 6th through 6 p.m. on May 7th and help lift them back up. Because when the world is upside down, giving always matters.